Tammy with Real Southern Woman. I hope y'all had a blessed day today. It is Tuesday. Um, I did not come on here yesterday on Martin Luther King Day. We had a wonderful day together as a family. Um, can you believe that it is 6, almost 6.40, I think. I'm a little late because I just finished supper. But anyway, the mailman is just now running in my neighborhood. I have no idea what happened. Maybe somebody was out and somebody had to take her her route or whatever, but uh, somebody's out there just now getting us our mail today. What about that? It's a good thing we took all our packages to the mailbox this morning. We mailed out 29 cookbooks today. People are really buying the cookbooks, so I'm excited about that. Um, today is January the 22nd. Every time I see the number two, 22, um, I think about when Chris asked me to marry him. He he asked me to marry him on November the 22nd. And um, I think, you know what? I'm not even sure this thing is connected to my, it's not, so it's fine. I think that um, he asked me to marry him on November the 22nd. And then we got married on April the 22nd. My birthday is May the 2nd, so all he has to remember is a bunch of twos, but he does have to remember where to put them in the year. Um, but it always reminds me of me and him. Anytime I see the number 22, that's our favorite number or two. If we go in and we're number 22, it's just fun. But anyway, our motivation of love, of all things, that's what our study is about today. Um, when I'm sitting here talking about it, it reminded me of the day Chris asked me to marry him. Um, it says our motivation of love, and I'm actually going to read this out of Experiencing God Day by Day, which is our Henry Blackaby book today. Um, now, I know some of you guys have gotten the other one, and I know some of you have actually gotten both of them. You can get them ebook a lot cheaper. This is an actual leather <laughs> uh, book, and let me tell you what I did the other day. The other day, it was next to my CPAP machine. Uh, which is where I sleep, and I spilled some water on it, and boy, was I glad it, that it had a leather uh, cover, because it really did keep it safe, um, but anyway, enough of that, right? I decided I'd bring y'all over here where my curtains are, instead of y'all staring at my bed when I do Bible study. It's kind of weird. Um, it says, our motivation of love. This comes out of John chapter 17, verses 25 and 26. It says, Righteous Father, the world has not known you, however, I have known you, and these have known that you sent me. I made your name known to them and will make it known so that the love you have loved me with may be in them and I may be in them. Um, so that is John chapter 17, verses 25 through 26. And I normally tell y'all where we are before I start, but let me just tell y'all right quick. Let me look it up. Yes, um, the time snuck up on me today because I always take an afternoon nap, and I normally take my nap anywhere from 2 to 5. Well, I lay down later today because we were working on stuff. And Chris did not wake me up until 5 after 6. And I, I, he actually didn't wake me up. And I got up and I said, Chris, we normally have supper at 5.30. Why don't you let me sleep? And um, I, and so anyway, I'm just now finishing up supper. Um, I'm in love with my air fryer. I made chicken in the air fryer. I fried up some beautiful squash. I'll show you a picture of it on Color Valley Cooks Group. And I made some red potatoes. But... John chapter 17 is the chapter, I believe where Jesus is, yeah. Uh, Jesus prays for himself and he also prays in the garden and that's what we're reading out of. Um, before, of course, he's crucified. Now it says, you do not organize the kingdom of God, you agonize the kingdom. You agonize the kingdom of God. You cannot be close to God without being affected by his love. The Heavenly Father loved his Son with eternal love. Everything in the heart and life of the Father was released to his Son. As the Father expressed his love for a broken and sinful world, this passion was manifested through the life of his Son. 
The Father initiated his plan to save mankind. And out of a heart of devotion, the Son accepted the assignment that took him to the cross. As Jesus walked among the people, the Father loved and filled his Son. Jesus recognized that no ordinary love could motivate him to go to the cross. No human love could keep him perfectly obedient to his, father's throughout, to his father throughout his life. Only his father's love was powerful enough to compel him to commit his life to saving the purpose of his father. Jesus prayed that God would place the same love in his disciples. He knew that no other motivation would be sufficient for the assignments God had for them. God's answer was to place his son in them. It is impossible for a Christian to be filled with this measure of love and not be on a mission with God. You will be incapable of ministering to everyone God sends you unless you have his love. You cannot forgive others or go the extra mile with others or sacrifice for others unless you have first been filled with the boundless love of God. Seek to know the Father and his immeasurable love and allow his Son to love others through you. That's a pretty lesson today, isn't it? So it's talking about our Father's love, which is called agape love. And... Um, and it talks about how only God's love uh, would have been strong enough and powerful enough to keep Jesus, which was God in the flesh, um, motivated and on task while he was here on earth. Because it was evident to Jesus that we didn't have that type of love. Um, the only way we have that type of love today, actually, is when we're saved. God does send his helper, which is the Holy Spirit, who comes to live in our heart, who convicts us of, of sin and helps us uh, learn how to understand the Bible. And with that love through the Holy Spirit, we can love others as Christ loves us. Without that love, we can love people with the, with the love that God gave us the capacity to love people with, but we can't love people with the forgiving uh, type of love that our God has. Um, and so just remember that. I hope you are saved. And if you're not, then um, read Romans. Uh, the Ro Really, I like to tell people to read uh, John, which is what we're reading now. Um, even if you are saved, if you have any questions about being saved or whether or not you might be saved, that kind of question, you can read the book of John and it will really help you figure out and stay in check on your salvation. Um, but it's just wonderful that we are loved that much by a, a God who would actually sacrifice his son on that cross. It's unbelievable. Um, so let's just keep that in mind. So we are very special. Uh, we're really not special, but we are in a way. We are, um, it's so hard to describe. Spiritually, we are, but fleshly and carnally, we are not. <laughs> and so uh, it's God inside of us that makes us who we are and special to uh, God. Because when God looks down on us now, he doesn't see us and our flesh. He sees his son's blood uh, that's been sacrificed for our sin. Praise the Lord for that. Um, I hope y'all have a blessed um, evening. I try to get on here every day at 6.30. Uh, today, was, I was just a little bit late, but I will try to be on here at 6.30, um, Lord willing. Uh, just remember, if for some reason I'm not on here, either it may be a weekend, it may be a holiday, it may be a day that I'm out with the kids doing something important, but don't worry about me. Just know that the next time I'll be on here and I'll tell you why I wasn't. Um, let's go ahead and say our prayer so I can go eat my chicken and my beautiful fried okra, not okra, my beautiful fried squash. Um, and it's good to see everybody. I see that Sharon's on here, Brenda, Marsha, uh, Garden Obsessions, 
you know what? You you tell me what your name is all the time and your husband's name. And I know he has a strange name. It starts with a B. But it's hard for me to remember uh, because your name's not on there. It's always Garden Obsession, so I don't remember your name. Um, Marilyn King, Lu uh, Lula Johnson, and Patricia, everybody. And I know I've done a shout out for Garden Obsessions before, but if you like flowers, trust me, just go to her Facebook page and just look at the beautiful pictures of flowers that she has on her page. And anybody like her that stares at such beautiful works of God, how they couldn't believe in a God, I have no idea. Because those flowers are the most beautiful things. What are the most beautiful things on the earth are flowers. So y'all go take a look at her page. I'm not kidding. It's gorgeous. Her flowers are gorgeous. Um, let's say our prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your love, this abundant love, this agape love that you have provided through your Son, Jesus Christ, by the Holy Spirit that comes to live in our heart. We thank you so much for your guidance that we have through this Holy Spirit. For without him, we would be wandering and think, you know, just doing our best like those in the Old Testament um, with, when they, they didn't have the Holy Spirit to help them. And I thank you so much for your Holy Spirit and your word. Um, to help guide us each and every day, to help make our lives more abundant, and to help give us joy, peace, and love in our hearts. May we spread your love um, to others the best we can, um, and let's try really hard um, to always give you credit for all the good in our life. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Y'all have a beautiful, beautiful night. It's so good to see all of y'all, and I love you, and I love... Um, I love y'all too. Somebody said they love my Bible study. Thank you. It is a blessing to get to bring it, and it keeps me in check, and it keeps keeps us all in check, and um, we can never read too much of the Word of God. Y'all have a good night. Love you.